Using color is very easy in processing. Now you're going to see that frequently when I lecture, I am going to simply remove comments because I think it's really boring to watch me type. So right now, the ones that have these slashed lines in front of these, the computer is ignoring them. Humans can read them, but these two slashes mean to the computer, this is a comment, please ignore me. So the only code it's recognizing is the size line, the fill line, and the ellipse line. Now, we're going to cut this out, and we'll bring it back in a minute. I want to show you, we're using RGB, red, green, blue, colors that mix. So when I run this, it gives me a solid blue with a black line. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, that's great, Mary, but how the heck did you figure out what those numbers were? Well, processing has a great tool to do a color selector. So you can find any color that you like. Let's say I'm in the mood for a nice pink, and then you want to use the RGB colors. So if I want to change it to this shade of pink, I just type in those colors. 172, that's the amount of red. It's on a scale of uh, 0 to 220. 35, and 193. And then I can redisplay that, and it's pink. So that works really well. But you'll notice that I like to add occasionally a fourth option. This option can be used or left off. This is a term that you're going to understand later. We are overloading our constructor, which basically says that there are two sets of variables that we can pass to the fill. We can either just pass the color, which is what we've done, or we can add a transparency setting. So if I set it to 50, this is its opacity, it will be 50% opaque or 50% transparent, depending on the way you look at it. So I can stop this and run it again. And you can see that it's partially transparent. So if something is overloaded, that means that we can send different sets of variables to it, and it knows what to do by the number and kind of variables that you send to it. So with the fill, you can either send it three parameters or four. And if you're sending it three, it will always be your RGB values, which you can get right here. And the fourth value is optional, but that value would be your transparency setting. So when you're teaching yourself this, or when you're working on taking notes, I would and always be consistent either before or after that you are going to put in a comment saying, fill RG. B, and then I would some way signify to myself that there's an optional variable here, and I might do it like this. And let that signal to me be that that is optional. So I can either pass just the RGB or the RGB and transparency values. And that's just my note to tell myself how it works. So now we can show you a couple of other options that are available here. I have the no stroke option, which basically just gets the rid of the stroke from the image. So we only have the fill. You also have a no fill option. You don't want to do those at the same time. Because if you do, the, do those at the same time, you will get nothing. It's there, but it's invisible. So if we had it without this setting, you would just get the stroke because of the no fill. So be aware that that's what those do. And again, if you want to turn these off without getting rid of them, you just comment them out. And that's a good thing to do when testing frequently. And so you can also change the stroke color and the stroke weight. I don't remember what those colors are, but you can look it up. There are all sorts of hexadecimal values all over the net. So I've set this stroke color, because stroke here means stroke color. And I could, again, set transparency. And the stroke weight. 
And then I can add a few more ellipses in here. And you'll notice that if I change the fill, which I can do just by typing the word fill again, it will change the color on the final ellipse. Oops. So that gives me three partially transparent because I'm setting the fill transparencies in here. And you can see where it overlaps, it gets more intense because you're having partial transparency on each of these. So that's just some of your basics with working with color. And just remember, if you can't figure out what color that you want, in the tools, use your color selector, and it will let you pick pretty much any color you want, and then you, you will type the RGB values.